Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante, and this is day two of EMC World. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE.TV's continuous coverage, where we go into the tech events, we bring you the brightest stars, uh, the, we like to ex extract the signal from the noise, and we have a good friend of theCUBE, Bill Schmarzo, who we've anointed the dean of big data. I don't know if we, st we started, but we kept it going, Bill. Welcome yeah. to theCUBE again. Well, I'll definitely give you guys credit yeah, for well, it. Thank you, but uh, I think uh, John Furrier uh, uh, tweeted out uh, that, that week we were at uh, Strata. Yeah, it was at Strata, Somebody yeah. else came up with it. I think it was Ed Dumbill or Alistair Kroll, and uh, we ran with it, and that was a lot of fun. <laughs> it was a great event, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a great event. That's, that's always a great event. It's just, it's, it's so invigorating to be there because you've got such a vibrant audience who, who is so interested in conquering the world. I mean, they don't know what's not in front of them yet in some cases, and they're just balls out just trying to make things happen. Yeah, I love it. And, and you know, John, as we were talking off camera, is at the HBase conference today, yep. and uh, I've not been, but it's supposedly sold out. Uh, <clears throat> we're gonna, I think we're going to see a similar sort of uh, uh, attendee. A lot of alpha geeks, a lot of, a lot of business people trying to figure out what's going on, and yep. uh, you know, HBase is at the heart of that whole thing, and uh, although there's alternatives, right? It's not the only one out there, it's is true, it? true, right? It's very true, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, so tell me what's going on at EMC World for for you. How are you spending your time? And so I'm I'm spending my time in two areas. One is I'm meeting with analysts, sort of sharing what I'm hearing. You know, the noise out in the marketplace, um, which is always interesting to me to hear their perspectives back. So, and I, I don't like being a talking head. I want to hear what other people are thinking, and in particular, what the analysts are hearing out there as far as what are the challenges in the big data space, and how does that correlate to you know, what I'm seeing is I talk to customers out there. And the second activity I'm doing, I spend a lot of time talking to customers out here. Quite a few of them out here visiting, um, getting ready to go to the data science um, summit tomorrow. So it's always great to talk to them to figure out, you know, why are you here, are you trying to learn? Where are you on the, on the, on the roadmap towards, uh, you know, on this big data journey? So what are, what, are the, what, are, what are the analysts telling you? What are they, you know, what are, what are they asking you and what are they, what are they seeing? What, how, summarize that. So here's, here's how I'd classify it. If, if they're analysts that come from the traditional BI data warehouse space, the audiences they talk to are still kind of sitting back waiting. Um, there's, there's a lot, of, un, there's a lot of, of uncertainty regarding how some of these new tools like the HBase, the Hive, the Hadoop, MapReduce, how that plays within my existing BI architecture. So there's that audience, but if, if I talk to analysts that come from more of the data science sort of perspective or big data, I mean, they're all about new data sources, new application, new technology, new opportunities. I see th those analysts much more enthused about what's ahead of them, and, and, and no ding in the BI data world, guys, that's, that's my world too. But there seems to be a lot more apprehension by those folks trying to figure out, you know, in many cases, their customers are not even quite certain what big data is yet. And I, and I kind of find that surprising. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I had just had Chuck Hollis on, and we, didn't, we didn't, weren't able, we didn't have enough time to get into this, but he wrote a, a blog piece way back when, maybe it was right around the time you guys got into uh, uh, acquire Greenplum, basically saying that big data is an opportunity, you know, not, not a liability. And, yes. And so, he was one of the first that sort of started talking about it that way, but people look at data growth and the, the problem of, of volume of data as a problem, an issue that has to be dealt with and managed, um, I think that new group of, of, of people looks at it as, wow, how can we get our hands on this stuff and, and, and monetize it and make some money out of it? I, you're exactly right, Dave, exactly right. I think there is there is a group of people who see that data, within that data is opportunities to, to transform from being a market follower to you know, a first mover advantage for gaining insights on the markets, products, customers, and competitors that they can leverage to drive differentiation in, in their business models. I went to the, uh, uh, the breakout session you had at the EMC CIO Forum in October, and we saw that there, yeah. right? There was a lot of angst. Um, and then there were some people in the audience, it was a minority, but there were some people in the audience, and I, of course I was one of them, <laughs> very excited about this, you know, because I didn't have to deal with the traditional IT mess, you know, it was all yep. greenfield for us. And so, so we just did a survey on Wikibon, of the Wikibon practitioner community, which is a lot of traditional IT people, and we asked them what's their biggest big data problem, and number one was figuring out how to monetize and okay. get value out of the data. So that makes a lot That's, of sense yep, to me. Yep. All the rest of the problems that you know that, we, that, that they cited or we cited that we had them rate and rank, very much sort of vanilla. It was all yeah, 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 yes, yes, yes. You know, sort of, sort of, sort of. And I think the re the reality is they don't know yet. They're not there yet. You know, they're not there yet. And my frustration is they're not trying in some cases. And you know, and that's easy for me to say because you know I'm a consultant. But I, I, I 
just see people, some companies are just so hesitant about, about making the wrong move that they're not focused on even trying to figure out what sort of right move there is out there. They're, they're more focused, I'm not sure if I can, how I'm to say this, but they're more focused on making mistakes than on making game-changing yeah. moves. And, and I think that the, the new big data culture has got to be a let's try it culture and see what happens. Yeah, you know, it, I, I, you're, I, gonna, you're gonna get it wrong. Oh, no know? doubt, I mean, I had interesting, somebody said, well, I'm, I, somebody, I had a customer last week tell me, I'm chartered to develop in a three-year plan for big data. And I said, that's a wasted effort. Mm -hmm. I said, why would you, I said, you, you got to figure out where to start first. Yeah. And then you'll get there, but if that's your first move is to figure out a three -year, your three-year plan, you're going to get nowhere. Yeah, so then the other, the other interesting thing that came out in the survey was we asked people, what, what initiatives are you going to hire outside services for this year in 2012? And we had a lot of cloud deployment and cloud management. Big data strategy was like two or three, okay. right up the top. So it clearly says, we don't know what we're doing. We, we, we got to get our strategy together. Big data deployment, way, way down. Hadoop yeah. deployments, way, way down. Not surprising. Yeah. So okay, so, so customers are basically saying to you the same thing. Hey, we need to do a three year plan. Now in three years, the whole oh my thing gosh. is going to be, three years is way too long of a horizon. Well look what's happening you know? in the technology underneath all this stuff. I mean, Google comes out and announces BigQuery, right? Well, right. what does that mean? Well, yeah. no one knows yet, but it's probably going to have an impact. And so there's no way, if, if you were developing a three-year plan and started it three months ago, you missed all of that and you got to go back and re-rigor your three-year plan, I guess. So let's say you know, the CEO is you know, on the plane, reads some article or you know, whatever, he sees some video from you know, the Cube, and uh, he says, hey, th this big data thing is really interesting to me. In my gut, I feel like it's, it's, there's something there. It's not just a bunch of marketing hype. So what's our big data strategy? So they go to the whomever, maybe it's the CIO, maybe it's the, the head of sales and marketing, I'm not, you know, not really sure who the right person is, and says, figure it out. So they, they come to you, hey Bill, you know a lot about this stuff, we need to get together, and get our uh, big data strategy together. Where do they start, what should so they do? We really try to push people to stick their toe in the water. Uh, we've talked about how we run these vision workshops to help them understand sort of the realm of the possible, not only for the IT organization, but also for the line of business. I mean, if you're trying to do custom retention programs, how can you leverage social media data to improve that effectiveness? If you're trying to do, drive, improve your customer satisfaction, how does all this external data out there help you to get a better feel for sentiment on the services you're providing? So we try to get people to sort of start by doing something. Pick a business problem, understand that how, how these new data sources and these new technologies like Hadoop, like R, like HBase and Hive, how you can use these things to try to glean out new insights about your customers, your products, your markets, your competitors, that really can drive some business value. Start there, right? And as you go, you know, evolve as you go along, one problem at a time. You know, do the vision workshop, do an analytics lab, look to operationalize that, and just kind of build slowly on this process. You don't have to dive into the water head first, because I don't think people know where the stumps are buried underneath the water. But there's no reason to stand on the sideline to figure out what's going to happen. You know, start wading into the water. One of the reasons I'm so excited about big data is it, it cuts across so many industries, virtually every industry and every company um, is going to be affected by data. Uh, a lot of times, you know, people say, well, that's not our core company. That, that, you know, that internet trend, really, that browser thing, that's really not our core competency. Mobile, <laughs> that's not our core company. But data, should data be a core competency of every single company? You know, Joe had, a, in his keynote yesterday, I thought had a really interesting slide. He said, he said that the, the industry overall is transitioning from the application as a center with the data around it to the data as a center with the applications around it. And I think that's what we're seeing is that people are starting mm -hmm. to realize that the applications aren't quite as valuable as the data themselves. And the data that's important is the data that's about your nouns, your business. I mean, what are your nouns? Your customers, your products, your partners, your markets, right? And the idea is that you basically focus in on building this, those, those nouns um, with outside data sources to really strengthen your insights on what's going on. So I actually think that there is a big transition from people who are focused on trying to optimize their applications, people are starting to realize, well, the data is what's important, and how I use that data, how I tease insights about data, how I use that data to make better, more frequent, more granular decisions, that's what it's all about. Let's talk about, you know, the other thing Joe said that really struck me, and, it's, and of course he, he said it because we were on stage in there, I don't know if you saw us, John and I with Maggie Burke and EMC TV just beforehand, and Maggie asked John, what's, what's the future about? And John said, the future's about real time. And Tucci basically you know, pulled out his wallet <laughs> and said, I'll, I'll, I'm given a prize, I don't know, trust me, it's going to be a good one uh, 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 for the, you know, naming the guy. Yeah. But then he said, I'm going to predict uh, real time is really where all the action's going to be. 
So I want to talk about real time because you know you and I have talked about Hadoop a lot, you know, yep. Hadoop World, and yep. you know, everybody's yep. Hadoop crazy, but Hadoop's batch. Hadoop's right. not, not real, real time. time. No, it's not real time. You know, so yeah. is there a dissonance there? Well, Hadoop does what Hadoop does well, mm -hmm. right? And I think if you try to think of Hadoop as, there are people who say, oh, big data equals Hadoop, uh, right? And that's the first, the first problem is that it, you've got a richer set of tools out there now. Not just Hadoop, but you have your traditional BI and data warehouses. You have all these in-memory computing, uh, like you know, we've got Gemfire and SQL Fire from VMware and such. It's, it's really putting together the right architecture that allows you to, to do what tools do best. So do what Hadoop does best and do, which is not real time, but the ability to process massive amounts of data, to look at unstructured data, to tease insights out of that, to you know, schema on read versus schema on write sort of stuff and agility that provides. Use the right tool for the right things. And I think, by the way, that's part of why IT organizations are, are, are paralyzed. Because it isn't like, oh, I just do Hadoop and I'm good. It's like, no folks, you've got to look at a whole wide range of tools and figure out which of these different technologies and tools are right for what you're trying to achieve. And by the way, if you don't know what you're trying to achieve, you're in trouble. Yeah, so back to the strategy you know, point is maybe start there. You know, what's Novel the objective, idea. You know? Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, you know, what hey. mountain do we want to climb? <laughs> um, so is, is your scenario then, that you'll, so Hadoop is this batch system, and then you, you'll find the nuggets in Hadoop, let them sit out there in their, you know, in, in their, in their you know, map reduced state, and then find the nuggets and bring them in to a, a, a data warehouse system? Yeah. So there's, there's two different ways that we see cases for how it's happening. So we're, we're seeing a case where people are starting to just dump everything in Hadoop as it is, right? Like the quote, Hadoop is a new tape kind of thing. <laughs> and then, then, then once it's in Hadoop, yeah. you, can, you can use that to, to take the unstructured data and pull structure out of that, right? So you can actually um, find structure there that, that may very well find its way into your data warehouse. It may find its way into your BI reports and dashboards. So it's new insights about customers' interests, about their passions and affiliations and associations that find its way into the data warehouse. So you could see that your data warehouse environment actually gets augmented by the insights Hadoop can tease, or you can tease out of that data using Hadoop. But it's also, the other spectrum, or the other place is, how am I fueling my analytic sandbox? And Hadoop is a wonderful vehicle for feeding data as needed, on demand, into that environment. So Hadoop can fill both, can help support both environments, but it's not the complete answer for both environments. I mean, you wouldn't have an analytic sandbox unless you had statistical tools like R or SAS, right? And so you've got to basically think holistically about your architecture and not just about it's Hadoop. Yeah, so um, when you talk about the analytical sandbox, are people actually setting them up, and what yes. do they look like? Oh my gosh, yes. It's actually, there are people who are doing that. They're, um, they're dumping data into it, they're, they're playing with it, they're building models, they're failing fast, they're going out and grabbing more data. This is kind of the advantage of having this Hadoop as your operational data store, and your analytic sandbox over here is that I can pull data in, I can play with it, find stuff, oh, don't have enough, I need more of this, I need less of this, and go back and forth and grab data here without banging against your data warehouse. Right, without dragging down performance data warehouse. And then when you find insights here, they may find their way into the data warehouse, they may find their way into other operational systems, but then you start thinking about how I package that and operationalize it. Now Bill, you sit in the services side of the EMC organization, and the, the, the whole theme of this event is transformation, and it's, 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 it's IT plus business plus you. Right. And IT, we see that as cloud, that's the big tra IT transformation that's going on. The business transformation, we're saying, is big data and yep. figure out how to get value out of Amen. data. And then the you is, all right, we're going to be a cloud architect, we can help you train to get that, you're going to be a data scientist, we can help you train to do that. Yep. Is that a reasonable way to look at sort yep. of how your messaging maps to what you're actually doing in services? Yeah, actually, we, we, we think about our engagements as, as a three-legged stool. We think about the first leg is um, the technology and the data as, as the first sort of the foundation. The second leg is the business initiatives. What are you trying to achieve? What business problem are you trying to solve? How are you trying to derive competitive advantage? And the third thing is the organization, which is not only about training and skills, but also how are you building the right organization so your data scientists and your BI teams are collaborating around these business problems? How do you make certain that the data science organization can get data out of the data warehouse as needed, but also as a way to publish insights back into your BI reports and dashboards and such? So we do think about those three legs as being um, the three sort of legs on the stool. Excellent, now you have this uh, data science summit they yep. decided the summit coming up this week. Are you, are you actively participating in that? Or are you I get to kick it off tonight with yeah. a little toast, kind of welcoming people, and then I get to sit back and listen and learn. 
yeah, and great. talk to people. So I'm actually very interested in, in mingling with the people and trying to see what's, what's going on because that's a, that's a self-selected audience, right? These are people who are already anointing themselves as data scientists and they're going to be further down the path than the people who I've met with, uh, I did a keynote a presentation at the Data Wells Institute about two weeks ago. Again, a very different audience of people who have different perspectives. So it's, it's interesting to talk to two different audiences because the, the right solution for it is going to end up being somewhere in the middle there. Well, we were talking before about the sort of the schism between the traditional you know, DWBI guys and the sort of emerging hot big data people. You're going to get a mix of those, I would imagine, at the Data Scientist Summit, right? I, I'd hope so. My fear is that we're going to get mostly data scientists and not a lot of the BI data warehouse guys. That's my fear. Well, I mean, I'd be surprised because we're at EMC World. You'd think people, if, if in fact our survey data is right and people are concerned about the strategy, you'd think they'd pop in, see what's going on. It's obviously a hot topic. We'll see. Yeah, I, I guess, hope so. I guess last year, I'm trying to think, yeah, last year there was, it was, it was mixed, right? I mean, no, it was mixed. Yeah, very data science. It was data science focused. Yeah, there's though. not right, a lot of right. BI people kind of popping in here yet. Yeah, okay. Um, I, I just think the BI market's been slow. They've been slow to move on this. And well, you know, the BI market, in, in my opinion, I'm just going to say it. You're, 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 you've been in that business for a long time, but it failed to meet uh, its promises in terms of, you know, 360 degree of view, view of the business, real time, predictive analytics. It just didn't happen that way. And, and in a way, I feel like, you know, the whole compliance thing, the Enron blow up, saved that business for a period of time. Yeah. And it be, but it became a rear view mirror looking business and now the promise of big data, we'll see if it can live up to it, is what the vision that the BI world put forth 10 years ago. Yeah, the, 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 BI, the BI tool, or the BI marketplace, I, I've heard somebody, somebody say that yesterday's failed technology but to a certain extent, it maybe was successful for what it was designed to do. Yeah. It just was never had the capabilities to do real-time predictive stuff. It never had the capabilities to do and look at unstructured data. All the things that are kind of hitting us now, the, the BI environment is okay for doing standardized reporting and dashboards and you know, financial reports. Fantastic, you need it's a single fantastic. version of the truth. You, you it's know. fantastic single version of truth as long as that truth is internal. You try to bring in outside mm. data sources, your single view of the truth all of a sudden gets really muddled. And that's why the BI market sort of struggles. Yeah, and big data's fuzzy. Yeah, you know, it's big data inference. scares them. Yeah, right. Big data scares them. Yeah, good. All right, Bill Smarzo, awesome seeing you again. Thanks, Thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Thanks for watching everybody. Keep it right there, we'll be right back. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE.TV's continuous coverage of EMC World Live in Las Vegas. Keep it right there.